Hello, and we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Encore number 169. Nice. Uh, and we are already in the thick of it. Winner's round three, and that means we have high-quality contestants that are here on stream, and definitely one of them we know so well here in the Westchester scene, that being Eliakim, the snake that up-tilts like nobody's business. Uh, but I'm actually unfamiliar with his uh, his opponent here, Vulgar Kaiju, but seems to be doing pretty well for himself. Even though Eli took that game one, this game two has started off with... Okay, that was almost pretty yucky. Uh, oh, what the spacing! Oh, he did not want that Nikita. In no universe was the Nikita what he was looking for there. Probably like B-reverse uh, grenade pull, something like that. But regardless... Eli is starting to make this comeback happen. Granted, that was about to say, Sephiroth has a built-in comeback mechanic. Now, I do believe it is based on how down he is, so the fact that... Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Every time Sephiroth starts charging a smash attack, I just have, like, guttural instinct. That was... Wow. You never see him go for those sorts of things. And, I mean, I guess with Snake, it's going for, ooh, uh, hit one of neutral air like that. It's not something, not a place he normally likes to be, but Sephiroth is, on the whole, a slower character when you actually get in close. So it makes sense why against, ooh, him specifically, he might be able to land that kind of setup. In the meantime, Eli is actually doing a pretty good job staying alive, racking up a little bits of damage here and there, but this is Snake, and Snake with a lead is a notoriously frustrating character to deal with. Ah, even an F tilt is not going to be enough. 158 snake being pretty heavy means that, oh, but that's really big. Having three of those orbs, he's probably going to go for the... I thought he was going to try to uh, grab onto the ledge. That is one way of dealing with it. If you just shield it, 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 it whittles your shield down to nothing. And if Sephiroth knows that, he can even pop it with one of his stronger moves at the same time. So one of the decent ways of playing around it is you go onto ledge, but you have to know the timing for that. And I think that Eli just wasn't 100% sure on the timing, dies for it. And although he's in a good position, he is facing down a Sephiroth with only one wing. And you know what that means. It's not just the extra jump. It's so far beyond that. The power that this villain has is <laughs> criminal at times. Oh boy. And now you're at death percent. Yeah. Both these characters are at death percent. We're seeing that the up tilt is definitely what Eli is looking for. But even so, um, okay. Uh, he has to actually find it. Neck and neck. More than enough time on the clock. These guys don't have to worry about any type of timeout. So being patient might be the game of the game here. Those down tilts. The amount of down tilts that Eli is finding. Is that enough to do it? Oh, I think he DI'd out, so that definitely will be enough. And honestly, putting up a really good showing there, but unfortunately, Vulgar, Ka Vulgar Kaiju not going to actually be able to take that game. And as a result, he's going to be having to fight his way through the loser's bracket while Eli runs proud through winners.